I know you are wondering why I had this fancy hat on. It's because we're going to celebrate. July 21st is Pollo de Brasa Day. Now, what does that mean? It's Peruv Peruvian chicken. It's our most popular dish. It's so popular, it has its own day. We're going to take that chicken dish. We're going to put it on top of french fries. Add a little jalapeno verde sauce on top of it. And a little feta cheese. Let's go ahead and get that started. Now this is going to be a two-day process. We've got to marinate our chicken for at least a, a day. What we're going to do, we're going to start off with the whole chicken. It's about four pounds. And we're going to take out the backbone. Now that was really easy. Okay. Now we're going to take our thing here and we want to just break that breast in the half in the back. That way it's nice and flat. All right, simple enough. Now we're going to make our marinade. Look at how that chicken leg <laughs> looks just about like Scott did whenever we had that last big ice. <laughs> that was not very nice. <laughs> All right, we're going to take these chicken. We're going to just kind of turn that up. All right, now. Yep, that's, that's, it. that's the pose. <laughs> All right, let's make our marinade. We're going to take one fourth a cup of dark brown sugar. So we're going to start out with. Okay, to that we're going to add two teaspoons of chili powder. One teaspoon of ground cumin. Four teaspoons of minced garlic. It's got a lot of garlic in it, but that's one of the reasons that we, that I was like, oh, this looks so good. We're going to have half a teaspoon of ground ginger. One and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. One tablespoon of fresh lime juice. And one teaspoon of lemon zest. I'm just going to give that a nice mix. And I'm going to take a, a nice little pastry brush here and our beautiful chicken that we cut with such tender loving care. We're going to take and we're just going to spread this over the entire chicken. We make sure that we get every single little nook and cranny. And we want to make sure that we use all of our marinade. So it gives us a great flavor. This chicken originally was uh, cooked as a rotisserie style chicken. We're going to use ours, we're going to cook ours in a cast iron skillet. So it's gonna make it easy for you at home and easy for us here at our home. Once we get all the marinade in, we're gonna cover it and we're gonna stick it in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours. We wanna make sure that all this kind of soaks into our chicken. All right. In 12 hours, We'll see ya. All right, it is day two. Our chicken has marinated in the refrigerator. I'm going to take it and stick it on a cast iron pan here. Oh. 
we're going to get it to where it sits flat as fast as we can. Actually, let's just do it like that. It's perfect. It's beautiful. We've got some garlic cloves. They got a little bit of paper on them. That's okay. We're just going to throw them in there. We preheated our oven to 425 degrees, and we're going to put this in the oven and we'll let it bake for 45 to 50 minutes. We want to make sure that whenever we put a thermometer into chicken breast or into the uh, thigh, it's going to read 165 degrees. Okay, now we're going to make our sauce. And our sauce, our base, is going to start off with some cilantro here. We put our cilantro in some water there, especially after you buy it. It kind of makes it, makes it perk up if it's not looking too gray in the store. And But anyway, we're going to start off with two cups of cilantro, just roughly. So we're going to stick it in a blender. Now, I forgot to mention a while ago, while you're cooking your chicken in the oven, it's going to get brown on top. This is the brown sugar. If, you, if it's too brown for you, partway through, you can go ahead and uh, tint some aluminum foil on top. That'll keep it from crisping up a, a lot. All right. Well, I really tore that up, didn't I? Great job. All right. Got two cups down the inside. We're then going to put in there one fourth a cup of feta cheese. If you can find cojita cheese, feel free to use that. One fourth a cup of mayonnaise. This is the sauce that's going to go on top of our fries. We're going to do four teaspoons of minced garlic. We may use this a little heavy-handed because we like our garlic. One fourth a teaspoon of sea salt. Two tablespoons of olive oil. People always used to comment about when we owned the food truck about, oh, we like to make that recipe at home. Well, this is actually a pretty simple recipe compared to what we used on the truck. A lot of those recipes were four, five, six recipes combined to create one. And then we we're going to add to that the juice of one lime. And the star of the show, one jalapeno. I know mom's looking forward to that. I'm going to take out just a few seeds because I know she doesn't like a little spice. I just don't like my mouth to go numb. Well, nothing wrong with that once in a while. The spice. Stick that in there. That is it. We're going to turn this on. Blend it. All right, now this is good as it is. But one of the secrets I learned a while back while cooking, especially when if you do meat, steaks, and a lot of sauces, is add just a little bit of white pepper, a little bit of garlic powder. Then our salt. We're only going to add about an eighth of a teaspoon of each. And it's just going to give it an extra little warmth to it. I know that sounds weird, but both of them just gives a little bit of warmth or a little bit extra, um, what's the word I want to use? Heat. Well, not heat, but it, <laughs> it gives a little bit extra complexity to, to the flavor. And that kind of helps out. But you don't need a lot. An eighth, to, an eighth to a fourth of a teaspoon of that. All right, we are finished with this step. We're now going to make a little bit of seasoning for our french fries that we put on as soon as the fries come up. And it's nothing special. This is part of me making a mess, and I'm really good at it. Yep. All right, we're gonna do equal parts. A fourth a teaspoon of smoked paprika. A fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder. A fourth a teaspoon of white pepper. 
and a fourth a teaspoon of sea salt. We'll give that a nice mix there. And this is the seasoning mix that we're going to stick on our fries as soon as they come out of the deep fryer. It's a great mixture. My brother absolutely loves it. So, all right, set that up to the side and we're going to start our french fries. Okay, for our french fries, we've got four small, there's just two of us, so we're just going to do four small potatoes. We're going to cut these in about one inch pieces. We're leaving the skin on. I like the skin on them. You can take it off if you want. And we're going to stick them in some cold water once we're done. That's going to get rid of some of that starch. And they're not always, and they're not all going to be the same size, but you want to get them as close to, as you possibly can so that way they all cook evenly and easily. That's about a quarter by a quarter, or more like a steak fry. But we're going to let these sit in the water after we get them cut for 30 minutes. Okay, uh, we've let these set for 30 minutes. We're now going to stick them on a paper towel so they can dry just a little bit. Because you definitely don't want these being wet going into the deep fryer. Now we have our deep fryer here. We have used peanut oil. We prefer peanut oil. I know some people are allergic to it, but it doesn't give a residue on your food and it doesn't change the flavoring of your food. It is more expensive, but it lasts longer, so it doesn't get bad as quickly. So we always use peanut oil. We're gonna take our basket. We've got it set at $300, $300. However, we're gonna have this set at 300 degrees. Now with this, we're gonna do a double fry method called a, a double fry method. So I'm just gonna go ahead. We don't want us to put that in the oil. We're gonna go ahead and put some fries on our basket here. For the amount of potatoes we had, probably gonna do this twice. And we're gonna par cook these. So we're gonna cook this at 300 degrees for roughly four to six minutes. We make sure that it's nice and soft on the, uh, nice, the fries become nice and soft. Okay, now to know when your fries are done, you can see they're not crispy yet. They're not crispy or golden brown on the inside, but you can take your knife there and it's gonna go in very, see how easy that goes in? They're soft because our goal is to make it crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. So go ahead and put this in another bowl and let that grease drain off. I'm going to take this basket, I'm going to wait for our temperature to, to become 300 degrees again, and I'm going to repeat the same process. All right, our second batch here is completely done. We put these over here on this to let it drain a little more. Out of there. We're now going to. Oh, wait. We have an, one that escaped. That's not right. We're going to set our now our temperature to 350 degrees. We're going to let that warm up and then we're going to cook it for another three to five minutes. Okay. Our oil is now at 350. We're going to again cook this. We want to make it nice and crispy on the outside. This is going to take, like I said, three to five minutes or however long you wanted to do it to make it nice and crispy. Our timer just went off. So our chicken is now done. And if you can tell, I got my trusty adventure hat on, or as we like to call it, the mowing and the gardening hat. But I like the great adventure hat more. Sounds like more fun. All right, our chicken is done. It smells wonderful. We got a little garlic cloves there. Our chicken is, we got a nice little crispy skin on the outside. We're gonna let that cool just for a second. Our french fries have become that nice golden brown. And I'm gonna stick that in the basket. Got a couple of ones that have escaped. Stick those in the basket. I'm gonna take a little bit of our salt, this is a mixture that we made earlier, and just sprinkle across that. It's gonna give it just a little bit of saltiness. Smoked paprika, salt, garlic pepper a white pepper and garlic powder. And now we're going to cook the rest of our french fries. Okay, while those are frying, we're going to go ahead and get started on one plate of french fries here. Just going to stick our fries across the bottom here. Take our fork, and we'll cut into our chicken. Look how nice and juicy that is.
I'm going to stick that on my thighs. And I want to make sure I get some of that skin. The skin's going to have a lot of flavor to it. Even if I have to use my fingers. We're going to take a little bit of our sauce. Now this has got a little spicy kick, so you got to be careful with that. A little sauce over our chicken. And I like spicy. So we're just going to add a little bit more of our cheese across the top. Our feta cheese. I'm going to add a few more jalap fresh jalapenos across the top. And just a little bit of cilantro. And there we have it. We have a Peruvian chicken french fries with a spicy jalapeno sauce. It looks delicious, and it is delicious. Give this recipe a try.